This is a case study that has so many multiple perspectives. It has the elements of many disasters in one, and we have access. You have three different kinds of disasters. You have the tsunami, the earthquake, and the nuclear. So it's both human and natural. And the nuclear is the unseen, but omnipresent. We have local knowledge, we have local scientists working on it, and we have connections to all this. Why don't we use that to build something that can be used here in the U.S., um, something that can improve situations like that might happen again, like in Katrina. We wanted to know what this whole devastation impact was and looking at how urban life uh, continues. And that's really what we wanted to, we wanted to capture the life of the dead in a sense. We want to document, we want to map, we want to measure radiation, and we want to do interviews. Interview the people who are partially responsible for what has happened, but also interview the victims, and then somehow couple all that together to build a whole narrative. Part of this whole process is that that's what this is all about, is the people who are affected by it, the people who are responsible for it, we need to bring their perspectives in as well. We want to create a, a global platform as opposed to a local platform. So all this field work, all this case study is, is to build something that's generic to any disaster. You know, the way we you know, build buildings, um, the way we move, the, the human paths that we develop, everything's inherent with risk. And in a case of a, a disaster that strikes, uh, for us, we should be able to respond, uh, which, you know, we should be resilient to any kind of disaster. The city name is Namiya City, population 21,000. 100% uh, of the population have been evacuated and even now, three and a half years later, unable to return. One of the priorities was uh, to document the different typologies of the city. So um, coastland, agriculture, urban, suburban, and then mountain, mountainous areas. And, and what we see are these facades of destroyed, abandoned buildings, and we're driving really slow, but it's, it's you can see that it must have been hustling and bustling because it's like shop owner, shop owner, barber, fish market, this, that, train station. Um, but what I'm hearing are birds chirping. There's no traffic, nobody's in there, and no people, just nature. With this study, um, I think that's sort of okay. what we're trying to explore is that you know once a nuclear catastrophe strikes, it's not only affecting that local area, but also worldwide. And how can we develop you know, better ways of understanding these uh, sort of urban spaces, contaminated spaces? But, you know, I, I think in any subject, um, risk and resiliency, that's sort of, you know, the overarching theme in the 21st century as we both study cities.